and welcome to Money Matters on TV360 Nigeria. I am Adeshawa Udushoga. The introduction of the finance bill by President Muhammad Buhari on October 2019 alongside the 2020 appropriation bill has been met with various reactions. The finance bill, according to the federal government, is supposed to support the funding and implementation of the 2020 budget. The idea is simply to correct the challenges of budget deficit which is gradually leading the country into likely debt crisis. You'd recall that the Debt Management Office at once stated that the country's worrisome borrowing trend was simply to bridge the revenue gap, to finance infrastructures so that jobs can be created and to stimulate growth, hence the introduction of this bill. To further increase its revenues, widen the gap of its tax collection, as well as limit borrowing, the bill amends some key provisions of the company's income tax, value added tax, personal income tax, petroleum profits tax, stamp duties act, and the customs excise tariff, among others. However, some of the prominent amendments affected by the act include the increase of the VAT rate from 5% to 7.5%, the introduction of a 25 million VAT compliance threshold, the exemption of companies with less than 25 million annual turnover, from payment of CIT, expansion of the scope of companies taxable in Nigeria to include companies that operate within the Nigeria digital space, among others, requirements of a tax identification number for opening of bank accounts or continued operation of existing bank accounts, provision of exceptions for the application of excess dividend tax under Section 19 of the CIT Act, and the imposition of excise on certain imported products. However, as much as the bill helped to ease the burden of many business owners in some areas, some may be paying more than they earn to the federal government. Meanwhile, at a recent roundtable discussion in Lagos, economy expert Vivian Annie shares a view on the pros and cons of this bill as it affects business owners in Nigeria. Some of the provisions of the Finance Bill 2019 include um, any company that has turnover of less than 25 million will not pay income tax. If you have above 25 million, but less than 100 million, you pay 20% against the current 30% that was applicable before this bill came into place. One of the other sweeter, some of, one of, some of the other sweeter things they also put into the bill was that um, if, you're, if you're within this 25, below 25 million naira bracket, you don't need to file VAT returns anymore, meaning that wahala of having to file VAT returns every month, you don't need to do it anymore. However, those are the, that's the sweet side, amongst other things. For some it was sweet, for some it was not sweet. Now let's go to the not sweet. I've told you some of the sweet sides. I can't go into too much detail because you know this is a panel discussion and other people have to have the same. Now the not, the not so sweet side was that VAT moved from 5% to 7.5%. Another not so sweet side is all imports are vatable, meaning whatever you import into Nigeria, you must pay 7.5% VAT, irrespective of the size of your company. I think maybe you know the LRS would correct me, but this is what this was my take after I read and I read the interpretations and summarization of the bill. Now, what does this mean for businesses? It means that now don't forget that Nigeria is an import-dependent economy. Don't forget that most of our you know some of some of our raw materials and some of our key inputs into our various industries are imported, meaning automatically that 7.5% is going to hit you. Between 5% and 7.5%, 7.5% might look small because a lot of people have told me that, Vivian, what are you talking about? After in the UK, that is 17%. So what is all this crying about? But from 5% to 7.5% is a 50% increase in that, if you look at it in percentage terms. So for every imported item that comes into Nigeria, that 50% increase in VAT will hit you. Now also look at the structure of businesses in Nigeria. Nigeria, as at the last survey, I think has about 45 million MSMEs, micro and SMEs, right? Now, a lot of those MSMEs are trading companies. And why is this important? You see, for a professional firm, a 25 million naira turnover sounds a lot because meaning it means that every month you're making total receipts of about 2 million or so. However, when you're a trading company, it's nothing. I tell you, some of these very small companies you see outside, if you look at their turnovers, you'll be amazed. Because what, simply, what is turnover? Turnover is the total sales you've made every year. And what it means that if in a month, 
You're rich. You've invested one million naira as working capital in a business, and you bought things worth one million naira to sell. It is very possible that if your what we call a turn a cash conversion cycle is just one week, meaning after one week you sell everything you have to sell. In a month, it is very possible you can sell forty million naira worth of goods. Am I right? Forty million or no four times four, sixty million naira worth of goods in a year. Do the numbers. It means that very quickly you're going to cross this. 25 million naira threshold. What it means that the number of companies who are going to be exempted from this income tax are not as many as we think. Yes, a lot of professional firms who, are, who fall within that threshold, but a lot of trading firms which form the bulk of businesses in Nigeria are going to go way above that threshold. And that means that they're going to be subject to the taxes that we currently pay, even though the ones for below 100 million have been reduced. Now, we could, if you look at all this, if you look at the fact that all imported goods are going to be subject to 7.5% tax, which is a 50% increase, it means that me and you ultimately are going to end up paying these taxes. And that's why I said I can break it down. But the second part of your question that happiness galore, I'm not so sure. But I think for insurance companies and some other companies, the new finance bill works out very well for them because it does give them quite a number of incentives. Whereas I'm not in FRS, I'm not in FEDRA, I am in state. Now, when it comes to issues of VAT, that is a law, that is a tax that is administered by the Federal Inland Revenue Service and not the State Internal Revenue Service. Just like what I mentioned, I showed there, it is just those seven law, uh, taxes that we collect. Now, for withholding taxes, there is expected to be credit note. And for us, as individuals, for us in LRS, we make sure that once there is withholding tax and you are entitled to credit note, you will get your credit note. You will get your credit note. And also, when you are computing your tax liabilities, we also make sure that it is used in computing your tax liabilities. Now, the issue of apathy comes because there have been several, 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 several stories about the taxman. And that is why we've been trying as much as possible to enlightening people. For the past one month, we've been on radio every day. Uh, we just came from uh, traffic radio today to enlighten people about tax. And we also have our contact center. You can try those numbers and talk to them. You are saying that people are afraid to come to the tax. But when you call the contact center, ask questions, you see that they'll be able to give you answers that are very, very key and important. So it's a matter of time. Everybody will get to know that when you pay, when you keep your records right, you pay tax according to your income, just like my brother Oyemi have said. So it's a matter of time, and we hope that the narratives will change over time. You have two options when you are making policy, especially around taxation in a challenge economy. You see, you can achieve progress by design or by default. What we do is that we have this idea that we have, we are broke, we need money. And then we change the thing from tax administration to tax collection. And so everything looks like one big fool and every little thing you find. Anybody who understands taxation will list it for you in this country that we have close to 156 levels of taxation. In fact, Professor Shotimori listed it about 256 from the research done at the Nigerian Economy Summit Group. There are two levels of that challenge as well, because you have taxation from state actors, which is government, then you have taxation from non-state actors. You have from Nigerian Union of Road Transport Workers, who also collect a significant amount of money for you. You have from market women, you have from uh, and you have from everybody, including your royal highness. Sir. Every one of us is, is part of it. And so you have a conundrum, whereby it depends on who you know or the level you are to overcome taxation in Nigeria. And so let's break it down to numbers. You mentioned 40 million people uh, in MSMEs and whatever. Let's be frank with ourselves. That definition between large, medium, and small has been blurred in the last 10 years, and is becoming much more modeled up. If you take a look at the pyramid of uh, economics in Nigeria, and you say that uh, people who cannot earn 25, uh, 25 million will be exempt. Look, anybody who is doing 25 million per annum is not contributing any major thing entirely within the scheme of things with that tax bucket. 
the major people who earn the most money in Nigeria contribute even the least. If you take a look at the structure of the Nigerian capital based on data, and by the way, we produce most of the data anyway, is that you find out that those who earn the most money at the level of the CITN uh, actually represent terms of population less than 1% of the total population. And so the majority of your money comes from less than 1% of your population. The rest of that population, whether your figures are correct, contrived, or real, can never add money to you. Corruption not in my country. Now, yeah. Yes, sir. Okay. Where I go come find 300 naira change? I better look for change now. Ah, don't do business. Hey, Timmy. I did, bro. I be. Mm -hmm. hey, I, I beg, uh, give me 200 naira. Make I take sort out this guy. If that's him, no get change. Take it, give us. I said 200. Give him 100 naira. Yeah. Okay, I agree to pay 200. I don't know. How much do you think they carry people from that place where they carry the chair? Why they touch me? Now, 100 naira. Uh -huh. He agreed to pay. Eh, hey, because that was what you said was the fair. Why, uh, why, why you not going to pay you? Why you they extort your customer? You see this corruption, corruption, what would they hear for news? They see for people everywhere. Now you believe so. This is corruption. Not in our country. Ah! Corruption not in my country. Stop corruption now. Although the federal government has allayed fears that the low-income persons and companies would be marginalized by the new law, reducing the burden of taxation on vulnerable segments and promote equitable taxation, the Finance Act 2019 had extended the list of goods and services exempted from VAT. In a statement recently released by the presidency, the additional exemptions include basic food items like bread, cereals, cooking oils, fish flour, fish, flour, and others. But on the flip side, since the VAT increase is imposed on some imported items into the country, this of course to discourage food importation and encourage local production of Nigerian manufactured foods. There is a possibility that this latest bill will affect food prices in markets and may also result to food inflation if care is not taken. Let's now join analysts to discuss the implications of the finance bill, particularly on the areas of value-added tax. Thank you for joining us on the program. My pleasure. Now, we see that the federal government is seeking to increase the, the value-added tax to 7.5% from 5%. And this is soon to start on February 1st, 2020. How would you react to this? Well, if you look at, if I isolate the VAT um, as the only source of, uh, as only component of the Finance Act, uh, what I would say, the, the VAT, which uh, the new VAT rate, which come into effect from 1st of February, will have the impact of increasing cost across board um, because the business operators will have to mark up their prices to include that value at the time. Remember, it's a consumption tax, so it's borne by the consumers. So you're likely going to see an increase in um, uh, the average level of goods and price of goods and services, which could lead an uptick in inflation. On the government side, the major beneficiary of the increase in, in the VAT will be the state government and local governments. Of course, you know the federal government only gets about 15% um, of the value added tax. In 2018, the federal government revenue from VAT was share of VAT was just about 147 billion. So even if we maintain the same level of economic activities and um, um, with the increase in VAT, that best the government will get the neighborhood of um, 75. 74 billion increase in its revenue coming from VAT. So the state government that get about 50 billion of the VAT that would actually enjoy more. States like Lagos, where consumption is quite high, would be a major beneficiary of the increase in VAT. And then the local government that enjoyed 35 percent. But ultimately, at the macroeconomic level, we should see an uptick in the consumer price level. Well, in its defense, the federal government is saying that um, it is introducing this increment in the VAT just to fund the 2020 budget because over the years it has had problems of revenues. Do you think there is an alternative for the federal government to fund the 2020 budget besides increasing the VAT? Yes, it may not be a revenue coming from to the federal government, but the, uh, the alternative funding sources to fund the infrastructure for the economic development in the country. And my approach has been that the government revenue at current levels 
will not be sufficient to catalyze to fund the level of infrastructural deficit that we have today. And I have actually been urging, urging the government that we, the government should explore the options of bringing private capital through public-private partnership. All the government needs to do is to identify corridors, economic assets uh, that can be funded by private sector or that have economic, um, that have commercial value. Uh, assets like major arterial road uh, networks, uh, the rail networks, the airports, uh, the seaports, and uh, this the government can concession the private sector operators who would build this uh, infrastructure and collect, recover their money from tools. And uh, that will free up the government resources so the government can focus on social, inf um, social amenities like education, health care, and then that will also fast track the process of economic development in the country. Now, let, let's do a brief analysis. What do you think is the aftermath of this increment of the value added tax on Nigerian businesses? Well, if you look at tax generally, there are some businesses that will benefit from the uh, Finance Act, and there are some businesses that will actually um, pay more taxes. But let's have those that will pay more taxes. The petroleum industry operators, operators in the petroleum industry, will pay more taxes because some of the debates they had have now been. Um, um, eliminated by the Finance Act. But the small and medium scale enterprises, if you start from the category of small enterprises that whose income is less than uh, 25 million, uh, they will no longer pay tax. They are not even subject, their products are no longer, services are no longer subject to withholding tax. So they will be freed of the tax burden. Therefore, companies between whose income revenues are between 25 and 100 million, their tax rate has now been reduced to 20%. It's only big companies whose revenues are above 100 million that will now continue to be a 30% corporate tax rate. So for small and medium scale enterprises, they're going to enjoy some kind of, for the small enterprise, they're actually enjoying the tax holiday. Um, and then for the medium scale businesses, they will enjoy lower tax rate. So for those ones, the Finance Act is supposed to incentivize them to work, uh, to expand their businesses. And um, uh, I believe that we have positive impact on their business operations. So you have the winners and the losers in the, uh, from the uh, implementation of the Finance Act. Okay, the level of unemployment is growing in Nigeria and the minimum wage is even less than $100. How do you think Nigeria would live up to the expenses of food prices, which is soon to hit the market? Are we likely to go to, on another recession? I don't think that would be uh, enough reason for us to get into a, a recession or to push the economy into a recession. Um, I want to believe that um, uh, on average, the average business, average consumer, uh, the average employee will have some level of elevation in their um, standard of living or their purchasing power. Of course, the elevation in standard of living will come from the elevation in purchasing power because of inflation. Because there will be inflation, inflationary impact of the increase in value added tax, and which means their income level will not be able to command the same volume of goods and services they used to consume. Um, so there will be some moderation in standard of living, but um, if resources are properly deployed and the government is able to build the supporting infrastructure that will create employment, create a lower cost of doing business, uh, then over time the impact will moderate. Okay, let's talk ease of doing business now. Nigeria has been performing well in the areas of ease of doing business. But now with the increase of VAT, how would you think this would affect investors? I mean, local and foreign investors now. I, I don't think so. Um, the issues of ease of doing business are related to the conveniences of bringing in, of, of executing business transactions in the country, like paying taxes, getting a, um, approvals for building plans, and... Um, um, such ease or bottlenecks or service that you need to go through to register your business, ease at which you register your business. Um, the Finance Act, for me, has further simplified some of the tax uh, regimes and um, has also moderated some of the tax burdens. Um, I'll give an instance. Until the Finance Act was signed into law, um, there is this uh, stamp duty on online transactions or electronic transactions of what, 1,000 and above. Today, under the Finance Act, the threshold 
for imposing the 15 naira stamp duty on electronic or online transactions has now been moved to 10,000 naira. So that will reduce the cost of such um, taxes as, as a tax of such tax burdens. Again, um, the Finance Act has also eliminated uh, stamp duties on intra-company account transfers. So for business operators, including the foreign direct investors, these are some form of simplification of tax uh, regime and a reduction in some of the tax burdens. Okay, it is no doubt that the federal government is trying to encourage uh, the patronage of locally manufactured products by uh, placing the VAT on some imported products. But do you think uh, now the, the federal government has closed down its borders, it is increasing the VAT on imported products. Are we not likely to drive foreign investors away? Yes, it's supposed to give them some level of cost advantage. But unfortunately, the level of cost disadvantage of local manufacturing has suffered today will not be compensated by a uh, waiver of uh, uh, value added tax on uh, their products. The simple reason is that the cost burden associated with providing your own power supply because of the efficiency of public power supply is so enormous that the VAT waiver will hardly compensate for it. The burdens of having your goods trapped at the, uh, your raw material trapped at the, at the seaport and taking you maybe two months to clear your goods at the seaport, it's so weighty that um, it is, cannot be eliminated by the value of data. So it kind of reduces their burden, but I do not think it will be sufficient to make them competitive. We need to address these infrastructure bottlenecks that are making businesses to be high cost producers in the manufacturing system in the country, which is why a lot, a lot of businesses are thriving here in the service industry. Because by the time you factor in the cost of generating your own power, um, generating your own water, you realize that a minimal tax rebate in terms of waiver of VAT will not assuage your um, cost burden that you are bearing with from those other infrastructure deficiencies. Okay, we thank you very much for joining us on the My program. Pleasure. Well, that's it for the program. Many thanks for joining us. I am Adesha Wao. Do sugar. Bye for now.